This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. I used Squarespace to build both Basics with Babish and BingingWithBabish.com. On the sites, you'll find recipes, equipment lists, other news, and updates. All beautifully designed, if I do say so myself. Get 10% off your first Squarespace order by visiting Squarespace.com slash Babish. <laughs> Hello there, welcome back to another episode of Anything with Alvin. Today I'll be making a double Wagyu cheeseburger from 4 Charles Prime Rib. Now I've always wanted to go to this restaurant, but due to the exclusivity and how hard it is to get in, I haven't been able to make it. On their menu it says it's a 10 ounce double Wagyu cheeseburger with American cheese, a farm egg, bacon, pickles, and a Marie Rose sauce. I can't really go there, but I thought it'd be fun to try to recreate it to see if we can get anything similar to what they might serve in the restaurant. First, let's make the buns. This isn't anything crazy. 500 grams of flour, 7 grams of dry instant yeast, 25 grams of sugar go into a bowl or a stand mixer that gets whisked until it's combined. And then I'm going to add 100 grams of whole milk, 200 grams of water, and 10 grams of salt. This is going to mix just until the doughs come together, and then we're going to throw in 85 grams of soft butter. Once the dough is ready, we're going to turn that onto the table, roll that into a ball, and let that proof in a big bowl for about an hour or so. Now for the really fun part, we're going to move on to the beef. We're going to take roughly 3 pounds of American Wagyu short ribs and trim off the meat from the bones, trying to get as much meat as possible. But these Wagyu short ribs are from Snake River Farms, which 4 Charles Prime Ribs does say that they use. They're a well-known purveyor for high-quality beef, and if you look at the meat, well, I think that's speaks enough for itself. This is beautiful, and almost a shame that we have to turn this into a burger, but science is science. These are then are going to get cut into small sections and divided down into small cubes so that we can put them on a tray to partially freeze. That's going to sit in the freezer for about 20 minutes or so, during which time we can make the Marie Rose sauce, which is a British condiment often made with tomatoes, mayonnaise, Worcestershire lemon juice, and black pepper, or just ketchup and mayonnaise. For our version, I'm going to do a third cup of mayonnaise, two tablespoons of ketchup, a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, and one tablespoon half teaspoon of paprika. I've always been a fan of making burgers from meat that is ground from scratch, and if you can't really do it at the butcher counter, an easy way to do this at home is to break out the food processor. Because the meat has been in the freezer for about 20 minutes, it's in a semi-hard state which allows the fat not to get stuck in the blades. These are just going to get pulsed a little batch at a time until they come out into a nice beautiful pebbly texture, sometimes even prettier than ground beef you might find at the store. By this time, the burger though that we had made before is nice and proofed, almost double in size. We're going to flip that onto our work surface, punch out the the air, divide it into small little balls, and make sure that they go onto a tray lined with parchment paper to proof and rest one more time. Another hour or so. Now that our beef is time to set up a little bit in the fridge, we're going to shape these into their patties as well. Now I'm not sure if the 10 ounces mentioned in the menu at 4 Charles Prime Rib is the total weight of the meat or the weight of each patty, but we're going to go ahead and make 5 ounce patties just to be safe, because that's a lot of meat if you have 20 ounces of beef in one burger. These are going to get rolled into nice little balls and then just put back in the fridge for later. Our buns have now woken from a good nap. Doubled in size, which means they're ready to go into the oven, but not first without a nice egg wash brush. A little golden yellow jacket goes on and into the oven at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes or so, turning halfway to make sure that the buns get an even toasting. So we looked inside the oven and realized that the buns were getting really big, which means we should adjust our beef patty shape, or else the beef is just going to look super, super small, like a tiny head on a big body, and that's not really fun. So we're going to go ahead, take the six patties that we made before, and turn those into four huger patties, approximately increasing each patty's mass by 50%. Each one of these looks basically like a tennis ball of ground beef, and I think it's pretty cool. One of the other things that I love about the Four Trials Prime Rib Burger is that they have a nice glazed looking bacon. So we got the thickest bacon we could find at the store, and we're just going to put it in the oven under a sheet tray until it gets nice and crispy. That way it can stay more flat compared to if you just fried it in a pan. 375 degrees for roughly 20 minutes or so. The bacon on the burger in the restaurant seems to have a nice shine to it, so I'm kind of guessing that's a bit of a sweet glaze. So they're just going to go into a pan with some maple syrup and cook until the syrup has reduced and is nicely coating the bacon. It also looks like 4 Charles Prime Rib also puts chives on their burger, which I think looks pretty but also makes sense given the fact that there's a lot of richness going on here. Our buns have exited the oven and have had the chance to cool a little bit, which means we're now ready to toast the buns. Give them a nice slice in half and put them into a pan with a little bit of butter to make sure they get a nice, nice, nice thick toast. Because having a toasted bun 
is key for a burger. Looking back at the four Charles burger, it also seems like they were able to get a really nice egg right in the middle of one of the buns, which I'm guessing was probably made with a ring mold. So into a pan, we're gonna go with an egg and some butter and fry it up until it gets nice and circular. This one kind of looks funny though. It's got a lot of craggly edges and doesn't look right. So we're just gonna go ahead, put that on the side, save it for backup and do that one more time. The key I found is definitely less butter and a little bit of a lower heat so that the egg almost steams rather than fries on the bottom. That looks a lot better than the other one that we just did. Time for the fun part. We're gonna go ahead and take these beef patties and smash them down on a really hot pan one by one until they get nice and cooked. Now because these are Wagyu short ribs, there's a lot of fat coming out, which is a little concerning because there's a lot of holes in this patty. And when I flipped it over, it just kind of crumbled a little bit. So we're still gonna put cheese on it, some salt and pepper for seasoning, but after taking it out, it doesn't really look like a solid patty. We're gonna turn this into chopped cheese. Having been in New York for a while, I've eaten my fair share of these things. And even though I've actually never made one before, I think the general idea is take the patty that's already been cooked with the cheese, chop it up into a meaty, cheesy mixture, and go ahead and make a sandwich with that. So we're gonna go ahead, put that on a bun, put some egg on it, put some cheese on it, put some of our sauce on it, put on the top bun, and make sure to wrap it in both parchment paper and foil for that classic look. This also helps keep the sandwich stable as you're cutting into it. it provides you a nice little vessel from which you can eat it afterwards without spilling everywhere. Definitely the most inauthentic chopped cheese I've ever seen, but hey, still looks pretty good to me. This tastes pretty good. We make sure to give the rest of the team, and I think that got devoured in about 2.3 seconds. For the other patties, instead of smashing it down from a bowl, I'm gonna go ahead and sort of pat and appreciate them into a circle so that they're easier to fry and have less impact when you hit the pan. These are also gonna go in the fridge just a little bit to set up a bit more, and then back into a non-stick pan this time, just to sear. Now there is a lot of fat coming out of these things, so much so that it's almost deep frying itself. So I'm draining a lot of it, trying to make sure that I can actually get a sear on the bottom of each patty, salt and peppering it, flipping it over, adding some American cheese, letting that melt, and taking that out. This is going to get repeated a couple times until I realize that during one of my oil draining sessions with the paper towel, it caught fire. That's pretty cool. Anyway, all of our patties are done now, so we're going to go ahead and assemble this burger. On our top bun, some Marie's roast sauce, and cover that with that perfectly circular egg that we attempted to make earlier. On the bottom bun, we're going to go ahead and put down two of our Wagyu patties, which have been seared and covered in American cheese, salt, and pepper. To decorate, a couple slices of that maple bacon that we made earlier. Serve that with a pickle spear on the side, and this is our version of the 10-ounce double Wagyu cheeseburger from 4 Charles Prime Rib, made with American Wagyu, American cheese, glazed bacon, a farm fresh egg, chives, black pepper, pickles, and a Marie Rose sauce. Now in the restaurant, what they like to do at the table is cut open the yolk, let it drip onto the burger, and we'll give you a whole show. But I'd rather just put this thing right on top and let the yolk do its thing by itself. I gotta say, this is a pretty good looking burger that I'd probably eat any day of the week. Now we're gonna go ahead and cut it in half to see what that cross section looks like. I really do like the way this is looking, which makes me more excited to go ahead and eat this thing. And I gotta say, that's a pretty good burger. Sometimes when you put too much stuff in something, it kind of meshes into one weird flavor, but this one is really nice because it's just everything together, but separate. This is a little bit too rich for me to finish the entire thing by myself, so the fun part is that I get to cut it up and serve it to everybody else in the studio. Steve, Rachel, Kendall, Andrew, Nico all get a little bite of this thing, and I think that's the fun part. Everybody gets to share the stuff that we make, especially when it's good. But the question still remains, how does the one at 4 Charles actually taste, and how does ours stack up? We were still weren't able to get a reservation at the restaurant, but we were able to place an order for takeout, so Steve and I went ahead and got a burger from the restaurant themselves with the farm egg and the bacon. They gave us the burger in a nice little takeout box. And the funniest part is it actually comes with little white gloves that you put on because that's how they serve it at the restaurant, which really tickled my pickle. Even though it came in a little takeout container and probably sat for about 15 minutes or so, I think this burger looks beautiful. The price tag was very hefty with tax and tip and all the fees. It added up to about $70 for a burger, which is a lot of money. With that in mind, we dug right in. Now the burger that we made was very good, but the one of the restaurant tasted just as good if not even better. Mostly because I think the thick cut bacon they made is actually a smoked pork belly that they do in house with the glaze rather than like supermarket bacon that they have to throw in some syrup afterwards. Our bacon was pretty thin honestly, it didn't have much meat, and theirs really really brought out the flavor of what I think the burger could have been like. We actually got a couple orders of the bacon just to see what it would be like on the side. It's thick, it's delicious, after taking a bite of that by itself, that is a whole dish I could slam down any day of the week. Is the burger worth $70? I leave that up to you to decide, but I will say there is little to fault with this execution on this burger, and I am someone who really enjoys eating burgers, so this will just be a lucky memory that I will get to cherish for the many years to come.
Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. They've been a great partner in supporting the Babish Culinary Universe and bringing my websites to life. From websites to online stores to domains and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for you to build your online presence. They also have SEO tools so that your site is getting found in search by more people more often. If you want to try it for yourself, you can start your free trial today by visiting squarespace.com babish to get 10% off your first purchase.